Starting the video with God. God loves silver, gold, platinum, and palladium. I'm putting those prices up right now. Gold hitting record highs. Man, if you bought gold when I told you to a year or two years ago, you're doing extremely well. If you bought silver, I was, I, like I told you, every time it rolled back to about $27, I was saying, okay, pick up some more. Look at what silver's at right now. Platinum and palladium are still a good buy. You could trade in some silver and convert it over to platinum and palladium. Now, a way you can do that is you can buy the uh, Sprott ETFs. Okay, don't buy GLD or SLV or any of the COMEX stuff. And that's how we're starting the video. Let's get going. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, September 28th, 2024, let's get into it. I'm about blind right now because I'm working on the lighting. This is a headlamp that I was using during the power outage. I've got some lights on order. Quit giving me stuff about how bad my lighting is. I'm going blind just for you, whoever watches these videos. Uh, let's just start with the breaking news story. I can't do it better than RT. Let's watch that now. From Lebanon, as the IDF has hit Beirut with a massive airstrike, claiming to have targeted the headquarters of Hezbollah. Unconfirmed reports suggest the movement's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, could have been inside. Lebanese authorities say at least two people were killed and 76 wounded in that attack. Earlier on Friday, 25 others were killed by Israeli strikes across Lebanon. It's the fifth consecutive day of large-scale cross-border bombardments. But now to bring you up to date on the scope of the devastation Lebanon has been facing. Six buildings, as I said, were destroyed in this latest strike in Beirut, with the Lebanese health ministry reporting 700 people were killed over five days. The UN estimates at least 50 minors are among the casualties in just the past 48 hours. RT correspondent Yassin Ekin brought us this report from the site of the attack. I'm at the site of the attack where Israel did not strike. It wasn't strategic or targeted. It was a carpet bombing on the residential area of Dahya. The scene is difficult to describe. Plumes of smoke are still rising up into the air. Emergency vehicles are trying to assess the situation. And while this attack happened, we were driving into the capital of Beirut. We were in the south of the country. And moments after entering, we heard, we felt the explosions. It happened back to back to back to back. And what made this a lot more difficult to understand is this is the first time that Israel has targeted the capital in the evening hours when the sun was about to essentially lose light. And what we see here is a different scene. It's not one attack, it's not one bomb. Preliminary reports suggest the munitions that was used were 2,000 pound warheads that were designed to penetrate through thick concrete and steel. There were 10 of those that were used to level these buildings. What is also worrying is throughout the entire day on Friday, it was quiet. It was peaceful considering the past week or two, and it was calm. But looking at the site here right now, it's difficult to understand, it's difficult to describe. It came at a time when the Israeli Prime Minister was attending the UN General Assembly. It came at a time when he was receiving backlash from world leaders. Delegations were walking out on him. And in the evening on Friday, they leveled buildings. This was not strategic, it was not targeted or precise like the Israeli military suggests. This was a carpet bombing designed to take out everything in its wake. One more thing that is important to note is that there are reports suggesting that the target of the attack was Hassan Nasrallah, the Secretary General of Hezbollah. These reports were first issued by Israeli newspapers. Now, we don't necessarily know whether that is true or not, but the one thing we can 
we can't bet our money on is that this will prompt a re response from Hezbollah, whether we're talking about a, a written response, a video response by Nasrallah, given the condition that he was not targeted in this attack. It will be devastating to see how Hezbollah reacts to this attack. We can expect the already volatile situation here, this, this conflict that has been essentially edging its way into the heart of Lebanon is essentially a worrying factor for many throughout as well. One more important fact about Dahi was many people fleeing the conflict in the south relocated to areas like this. And now it's been reduced to nothing but rubble. All right, so that's Israel. Uh, you know, I, I have to question how much longer? How much longer before we have a regional war in the Middle East? The warmongering Democrats, the bloodthirsty warmongering Democrats. And I never heard of before, but her name is Deborah Lipstadt. She is the U.S. State Department envoy to combat anti-Semitism. Watch her mocking the concept of the use of a pager as a device for murder. After October 7th, there was a feeling around the world that Israel is weaker. And uh, in, in, in the- You want a beeper? It, we, <laughs> I can give you a few. I mean, I, I can't believe it. In the absence of global accountability, repeated horrors are normalized, threatening to create a future where anything is permitted anywhere in the world. Those who continue to propagate the idea of Jordan as an alternative homeland. So let me be very, very clear. That will never happen. We will never accept the forced displacement of Palestinians, which is a war crime. For years, the Arab world has extended a hand to Israel through the Arab Peace Initiative, offering full recognition and normalization in exchange for peace. But consecutive Israeli governments, emboldened by years of impunity, have rejected peace and chosen confrontation instead. He's right, is he not? You know, anyway, I'm... I'm going to get into the top 10, and then we're going to get into the bloodthirstiness of the Democrats in just a minute. So, uh, terrible. Top 10 stories of the mainstream media. I tell you what, this, I don't know where he comes up with these, but he, it is, a, it's, it's, it's like the rundown. We're going to go through it in two minutes because I got a crap load of video for you. Not only just the breaking story. So the FCC fast-tracked George Soros' purchase of 220-plus radio stations before November's election, reaching 165 million Americans. This has never been done before by the FCC. So you can see the censorship is coming. The censorship is coming. In fact, I'm going to put it in right here. This is a clip by Joe Rogan on censorship. The more we have platforms where that stuff is just free, where you can just say whatever you want, say whatever you think about anything, which really X and Rumble are the only places that I know of that you could really do that right now. Have you, have you had any problem on audio at all? No. Good. No. Good. I haven't either. It's, uh, yeah, audio is like they're leaving that alone for now. I think it's probably because it's not as easily shared. Right? That's, that's what's coming next. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, all they would have to do is just put images of you and images of me and then have our audio and upload that as a video. And then maybe they would start coming after audio. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, I hope, you know, I just, I just hope this shit starts to turn around. I do too, but I don't think it turns around if Kamala Harris gets into office. I think they clamp down more. I think the same stuff that they were trying to do with Twitter, they're, they'll try to do with something else and with other things. They've already openly discussed it. You know, she's openly discussed that the same rules have to apply to Facebook, they have to apply to Twitter, and that Elon Musk could lose his privileges. And, like, there's so many wild things that they're saying. Uh, Tim Wall said that the First Amendment doesn't apply to misinformation or hate speech. Okay, well, it certainly does. 
It does. You yeah. know, sometimes people say things wrong. And the, the, the goal of the First Amendment is you say something wrong, and then this guy who's an expert says the right thing. Yeah. You know, and then you correct him. Yeah, I mean, the, the misinformation, I mean, it's all opinion. Right. Well, you know? so much of it turns out to be true. How about masks don't work? You would get screamed at for masks don't work. Well, oh, guess what? They don't fucking work. They don't work. I Fauci said masks don't work. Remember that interview before the pandemic, before they knew how big it was going to be? Yes. <clears throat> he was like, you don't have to. Two. And it was wearing doubles. Put two face diapers on. It's bananas how easily people fell in line. That scared me the most. I know. All right. So that was Joe Rogan talking about censorship. All right. This is what the Democrats are. Unbelievable. So now another hundred and 65 million Americans won't get any news whatsoever except perhaps on X. I don't even know what audio is. You heard Joe Rogan talking about that. Uh, you got Odyssey, and I haven't looked into Rockfin, and then you got Republic.us. I'm on there. Uh, let's just keep going. Number two, Donald Trump calls for Nancy Pelosi to be prosecuted for insider trading. I won't show you that video. I think that just says enough right there. Uh, number three, Zelensky toured our White House with Kamala, securing another $8 million to Ukraine. <laughs> you know why the Democrats are so freaking stupid? Why do they want to send all our money to Ukraine? I don't even understand it. It, it just seems like what they want to do. But, you know, the thing is that you and I, independents, Republicans, or people with common sense, we got to foot the bill. Because obviously Democrats just are on the dole. They're grifters. All right, let's keep going. Number four, U.S. Marshals on a manhunt for former Fulton County investigator and D.A. Fannie Willis alleged lover. You know, isn't this great? Uh, sometimes what goes around comes around. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't wish evil on this guy. But I tell you, that whole case that, that she brought against Trump was just bogus, man. You know, sometimes when you try to do something bad, uh, it, you might get some blowback. So that's, that was good. Uh, I, man, this 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 is terrible because I don't need, I never liked this guy, although I never I never hated him. I mean, he's a Democrat, but uh, let's just read it to you. New York City mayor indicted on corruption charges exactly one year after saying illegals are destroying New York City. A must watch. Full support, and let me tell you something, New Yorkers. Never in my life have I had a problem that I did not see an ending to. I don't see an ending to this. I don't see an ending to this. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. We're getting 10,000 migrants a month. One time we were just getting Venezuela. Now we're getting Ecuador. Now we're getting Russian speaking coming through Mexico. Now we're getting uh, Western Africa. Now we're getting people from all over the globe have made their minds up that they're going to come through the southern part of the border and come into New York City. And everyone is saying it's New York City's problem. Every community in this city is going to be impacted. We got a $12 billion deficit that we're going to have to cut Every service in this city is going to be impacted. All of us. And so I say to you, as I turn it over to you, this is some, some of the most educated, some of the most knowledgeable, probably more of my commissioners and deputy commissioners and chiefs live in this community. So as you asked me a question about migrants, tell me what role you played. How many of you organized to stop what they're doing to us? How many of you were part of the movement to say, we're seeing what this mayor is trying to do and they're destroying New York City? It's going to come to your neighborhoods. All of us are going to be impacted by this. I said it last year when we had 15,000. I'm telling you now, with 110,000, the city we knew we're about to lose. And we're all in this together. All of us. Staten Island is saying, send them out to Manhattan. Manhattan is saying, send them out to Queens. Queens is saying, send them out to Brooklyn. No. It's not the game we can play. 
So understand, even when Democrats go against Democrats, they are going to crucify you. They crucified Tulsi Gabbard. Democrats did. I tell you, they're ruthless, ruthless people. They crucified Tulsi Gabbard. They took out uh, uh, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, you hear anything from Bernie Sanders? Occasionally you get a little ex post from him, you know, he'll say something. He hadn't tried to run for anything <laughs> since they put the gabosh on him and crowned Kamala queen. I, you know, that's another thing about Democrats. How can you crown somebody queen and the whole party just goes, oh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. All clapping seals. We're all behind Kamala now. We're all behind Kamala because the elites told us to vote for Kamala. Oh, God, don't get me started. Uh, number seven, Democrat senators demand big tech censor Americans ahead of the election. As an American, do you support this? Uh, more on censorship, but we already covered that at the beginning, uh, but just more of what they're doing. Uh, so right now, uh, I mean, it seems like Elon is the only platform holding out in Rumble. I don't know how long they're... If, if, if Kamala gets elected, you and I will never get a bit of news for the rest of our lives. We're only going to get spoon-fed the propaganda, at least until the empire falls. And the empire is falling. We've got the BRICS coming up in October uh, of this year. Um, I've been watching some news on that. There's not going to be a lot that comes out of that. When I say not a lot, okay, I think they're going to work on some means of exchange uh, where they can, they can trade goods back and forth uh, without using the dollar, but there's not going to be a new currency that comes out of it. According to Pepe Escobar, I've just been watching him. Uh, there's, so there's not going to be a new currency. The dollar's not going to die overnight. Uh, but it's another nail in the coffin, just saying. All right, let's keep going. Uh, this is for my people, uh, my relatives in North Carolina. North Carolina Election Board removes 747,000 names from the voter rolls, including... 130,000 dead people. <laughs> so, so the Democrats aren't going to be able to cheat so badly in North Carolina. Now, does that mean Trump's going to win North Carolina? I don't know, but it just means the Democrats can't cheat quite so badly now. Uh, this is one that I didn't know. I mean, you know. Uh, number nine, son of would-be Trump assassin who defended his father was arrested on several counts of child pornography. Uh Boy, does this guy look weird or what, man? I hope you're seeing his picture right now. <laughs> you know, I was like looking at that going, no wonder this guy was a lunatic. Look at what he, I, I mean, my dad, well, I don't know, man. The eyes, look at the eyes in that photograph, man. I'm telling you. Uh, number 10, Mark Cuban claims the mainstream media truly leans right. What do you think? What the hell happened to Mark Cuban? I mean, the guy, what does he own? The Dallas uh, or the Miami, um, I don't know what the hell the team, he owns He owns some professional clubs. I mean, somebody's got some dirt on that dude, man. <laughs> he wouldn't be, I mean, it's like uh, he's doing everything. He knows the Democrats are going to tax the ever-living hell out of him. They're going to put on, on unrealized capital gains and absolutely destroy anybody who's got investments in the country. And he's all for the Democrats. If somebody's got some dirt on Mike Cuban, please, God, if you know anything about that, uh, send it to me. Uh, this is uh, Diana Penchinko. Trump said that Ukraine is gone, that there is no Ukraine anymore. And this was, uh, you know, if you didn't know, Trump met with Zelensky and there was a photo op, and there's a, there's actually a video, I'm not going to show it to you, where somebody made Trump really tall, <laughs> and, and Zelensky's this little bitty dude, and they're walking along. I don't know, I, I just, you know, I can only show you so much video. And and I guess this person's a Ukrainian, because uh, this uh, Diana, she says, as a Ukrainian, I would say it's sad but true. We have no economy. We live entirely in debt. Our population is half deceased. But there are Ukrainians. There are people, and they need to be saved. Force Zelensky to hold elections, or he will destroy us all. Now, I, I assume that's from a Ukrainian. So, uh, all you people with your Ukrainian flags in the windows, uh, don't you think peace peace might be a good idea? Maybe, maybe, maybe somebody should actually talk to the Russians and say, or like Trump, Trump says he's going to talk to the Russians and say, you know, 
can we come to some sort of agreement here? I understand we're adversaries, you know. Uh, uh, isn't there some way that we can end this conflict? Uh, it, it just seems like a good idea to me. But Democrats, because the totalitarian, warmongering Democrats will never, ever want peace anywhere in the world. That's who they are. Uh, oh, here's a bonus from uh, Tara Bull. Mark Zuckerberg says he is now a libertarian, hired a Republican strategist to repair his image after years of censorship. Does anybody believe that shit? <laughs> I mean, come on. No way Zuckerberg is, be, is becoming a libertarian. I, somebody somewhere is leaning on this dude, man. They're leaning on Zuckerberg. I don't know what's happened, uh, but he, he's trying to, to, to make believe. Uh, let's just continue rolling through the news. Uh, Josh Dunlap, breaking Minnesota Supreme Court rules that a person under attack or threat must retreat before using deadly force. Do you understand how stupid that is? Do you understand how stupid that is? If you've ever been in combat, all right, or just threatened, okay, you know, once you pull that gun, you're pulling the damn trigger. I'm sorry, man. There's no like, oh, I'm going to retreat. I'm retreating now. Please, please, don't, uh, don't, uh, don't keep coming. Don't keep coming. You are a dead person in that scenario. Just saying, I, what happened to the people of Minnesota? I mean, that's kind of a Midwest. I mean, I understand they got the, the big city. I guess Minneapolis just rules the, the whole the entire state. And that's why we have the Electoral College. I keep telling you that. Uh, so that all of these stupid people can't rule over the uh, the smart people. Uh, this this is, you know, I'll put it in right here. I, this is just cute. Uh, the logo of the Russian media agency RT.com is being projected onto the facade of the U.S. Embassy building in Moscow. <laughs> Remember when the U.S. used to do this to the Russians when, when the Soviet Union was around? But I thought, man, look at this. This is going to be awesome. Uh on the U.S. In, in Moscow as a response to Washington tightening its sanctions uh, regime against Russian media. Let's check that out. All right, so that was the video right there. Ah, uh, Trump. Going back to Butler, I tell you what, the dude's got guts. Can you imagine what it'd be like? Somebody just shot your ear off and you're going back to the scene of the crime. I, I will tell you this. I was thinking of a, a traumatic moment was when I broke my neck. And I fell down the stairs at my mother's house and because uh, she had no railings. And, uh, and I, you know, I spent three months in the hospital. But at the time, I was watching The Blacklist. Okay. And I, I remember it because that was the last show that I watched before I was going to bed. I still don't know how or why I, I was on those stairs or how I fell down them. Do you know to this day I haven't been able to watch The Blacklist? I, I avoid it like the plague. I'll be up on Netflix I because mean, I love The Blacklist. It was a great series. I just haven't been able to go back and watch it. So for kudos to Trump, man. Going back to Butler. What can you say? Uh... Breaking. Kamala Harris just lost the 2024 election by this statement from Donald Trump. Mainstream media won't show you this, but I will. She has lost over 325,000 children. The worst statistic of them all, 325,000 children. Think of that. Three and a half years, she lost 325,000 children. And they're either dead, being sold into sex slavery, or just plain missing. Think of the number, 325,000. If that were a Republican instead of her, and she was the border czar, she says, well, I wasn't the border czar, she was. And tomorrow she'll make a case that, oh, she did a fairly good job. You can't say much. Uh, you can't justify it. She should save her airfare she should go back to the white house and tell the president to close the border he can do it with the signing of a of a just a signature and a piece of paper to the border patrol 
Instead, she's going there to try and convince people that she wasn't as bad as everybody knows she was. Unbelievable. I've been telling you how the Democrats are pedophiles. They're satanic people. They are, uh, uh, well, you know what? Let's just watch the Roseanne Barr video right here. And by the way, I want, I've got a lot more video of Roseanne Barr talking to Tucker Carlson, but I got to keep it brief because I had so much other video with this video. Let's watch that. You know they eat babies. That is not bullshit. It's true. So it's not just the dogs and the cats, not just the pets. It's not just the dogs and the cats. They're full-on vampires. And everybody still thinks I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. They're full-on vampires. They love the taste of human flesh, and they drink human blood. They do, Tucker. Stop staring at me like that. You're freaking me out, man. Because they you do. spent your life in the entertainment business, so I think you have some authority on this. So many kids that I was in mental institutions with over the years, they are all from those cults. And they've covered it all up. They cover it all up. And, uh, you know, I just pray to God. I'm just going to pray to God that he opens everybody's eyes in this country by the time we go in to vote for Trump, that he will open up everybody's eyes and they will stop pretending to be asleep. You know what they say, you can't wake people up that are pretending to be asleep, but I pray to God, please wake up even those who are pretending to be asleep with the irrefutable truth of what the worst people on this planet are really up to. They are really up to that. They're doing it. There are so many victims. There are so many victims. There are so many children victims that are now adults. The epidemic in America is child sexual abuse, and I just want people to see it. I want people to open up their eyes and see how prevalent and horrible it is. One of three girls, one of four boys in this country today. It's just horrible, and uh, you just can't la, la, la it away anymore. It's going to get more and more apparent, and you got to choose your side. All right, so that was Roseanne Barr with Tucker Carlson. Now you say, oh, she's a right-wing lunatic. She's a right-wing lunatic. I'm telling you, man, these people, uh, the Democrats are... Pe Why else would you want to bring in human trafficking, fentanyl, killing hundreds of thousands of Americans, and hide 300 and some thousand kids all around the United States if you weren't satanic, drinking babies' blood, and hiding children, I mean, or pedophiles, so they can go in and rape these kids. And, of course, they're raping women, and that's why another thing that baffles me is that women are going to vote Democrat, even though they're getting raped. It's unbelievable. Ah, uh, this was just a cute, uh, cute one. Uh, this is Musk on free speech. Uh, I'm going to put that up above, but I, I'll just read it to you. So you're not mad at those who lied to you for years, but you're mad at me for proving they lied to you. <laughs> Do you know how many Democrats are pissed off at Elon Musk because he freed up X? To be able to post, you know, everybody's opinion. He's not censoring any liberals that are on X. He's not censoring any uh, MAGA supporters that are on X. He's not censoring any independents. He's just saying, hey, bring it on, man. Let everybody express their opinion. But it's the liberals. It's the Democrats. They're out there going, oh, my God, we must stop X because it's telling the truth. And, and, you know, and so, yeah, you everybody was being lied to for years. We watched uh, Joe Rogan on, on The Mask, and yet th they want to censor everybody now. Uh, all right, let's keep going. This is, this is cute. Uh, this is DD Geopolitics on Estonia is prepared to launch a, pre uh, a preventive strike against Russia to defend NATO if Moscow shows signs of preparing to attack the alliance. Uh, started, stated Major General Vahur Kuras. Chief of the General Staff of the Estonian Defense Forces, and check out the Chihuahua. <laughs> I mean, it's just like a Chihuahua. Russia's got 1.2 million men, man. What does Estonia have? Like 30,000? I mean, 
They would wipe out Estonia in a day. Well, I have, okay, let's say a week. It might take them a week to wipe Estonia right off the face of the planet, you know. I, oh, well, they could do it with one, you know, hypersonic missile. Just drop it right on Estonia. It's a small country. Boom. You know, that's a small, uh, you know, hypersonic missile traveling at 7,000 miles an hour is, is the equivalent of a small nuclear, a tactical nuclear weapon, even though it's considered conventional. Estonia, man. You're just going to be a burning crater in the planet. <laughs> You're chihuahuas, man. Just like Britain. Barking chihuahuas. Holy moly. Uh, all right. So um, we got a couple of other videos. I didn't write them down, uh, but we're going to watch those. This is uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor on a couple of uh, topics. Let's watch those videos now. And then uh, I'm going to finish up the video with... Uh, some bombs being dropped in, in Russia. And uh, I've got some other videos. I'll just tack them on right here. That's it. Peace out. Stay free. Presidents really need experience in four key areas. One, with the armed forces, in command of them, or at least experience in them for some period of time. They need to have an appreciation and understanding of the economy, how it functions. You know, what works, what doesn't. Uh, you then have to have uh, experience in domestic politics. You know, th that that's very clear. And then I, I would say, finally, uh, you need uh, some understanding of the international system. Who are the people out there? You mentioned Xi Jinping, Putin, Vladimir Putin. There are whole, whole numbers of key actors. What are their interests? How do they think? How do they behave? The last time we had a president that had three out of four of those areas under the belt was Eisenhower. I would argue that Nixon had perhaps two, maybe three of them. But otherwise, in most cases, all people come to the office of the presidency with experience in one area, domestic politics. That's Kamala Harris's background. She doesn't know anything about the armed forces. She doesn't know anything about, I would argue, the economy, how it functions, how it works, its mechanisms. And I don't think she has the slightest idea how the international system works and who's in it and what people's interests are. So I'm afraid this is the, the perils of the way we've set the system up. <clears throat> we reward and elevate people who know how to get elected inside the United States. That's it. So, I'd like to welcome you to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We love you both. So uh, that's thank, you. Nice. thank you. I'm a small business owner. I'm the owner of Century 21 at the Helm Real Estate. Good. The four years of your presidency, Mr. Trump, were the best economically I have experienced in the 35 years I own this business. <laughs> and my question is, what are your plans and policies to restore the economy so small business owners can thrive and make America great once again? Good. Thank you. Good. You know, we had a woman who was uh, very spectacular, Linda McMahon, and she ran the Small Business Administration, did a phenomenal job. And that's a very important group for what we're talking about with small business. But uh, to put it a little simpler, we're going to have low interest rates. We're going to have low taxes. We're going to give you tremendous incentive to grow and to build your business. And, you know, a lot of people have said that. They said one person who didn't support me he said, I must admit, I had the most successful four years of my life, but I'm going to vote for some. And I said, and now that person came back to me. I don't want that person. I don't want that person. You know, they say you should take everybody, but that, that's not the way I'm built. It's one of those little problems. This person, no, this was in the Republican primary, said, I had the best four years I've ever had under Trump, but I'm going to support this one. I said, that's the end of that, you know, when they came back. But we're going to lower interest rates. We're going to have low taxes. We're going to have tremendous incentives for small business. You know, small business is much bigger than big business in this country when you add it all up. And we're going to take care of small business in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am.